Hey everybody, just want to show you real quick some of the work that I did today on the 24 hour record boat. Uh, did a little work on the rudder here. So what I did was I hooked up this rudder lifting line here so I can take the rudder out of the uh, water. And the reason I want to do that is I want to test, be able to test and see how much uh, drag the rudder actually has. So I'll do a couple of runs with the rudder in the water and then I'll do a couple of runs uh, with, the, with the rudder completely out of the water and I'll measure my, uh, and keep my watts, so my power input consistent and then measure the resulting speed and I will be able to quantify exactly how much drag uh, this particular rudder has. So that's the rudder that I used to use and that's an under the hull rudder and they are actually more efficient, less drag than these rudders, these hang off the back type kayak rudders. Um, however, if I have the boat trimmed up properly, I may actually not even require the rudder when I'm moving in a straight line. So what I would do is I would pull the rudder out of the water completely. That's going to be the lowest drag configuration um, between you know the old style rudder and this new one and then just drop it in when I have to do a turn around a buoy and, uh, and then do the turn and and, uh, and then pull it back out again. So that's something that I need to test. I don't know for sure if that's going to be the case. The other thing that I'm going to do today, I just wanted to show you here um, a little bit about what we do with the uh, shafts. So these are quarter inch spring steel shafts. Um, these things are otherwise known as um, flexible drill bits. Um, they're fairly inexpensive. I bought a whole box of them. You see them over there. Uh, this is the shaft that I used, the same shaft that I used during the original record attempt, and there is a finite life to these shafts. They break. I can get through a full 24 hour period, uh, 250 some kilometers on this shaft before it will break, but you never know when it's going to break. Uh, from experience, we have found that most likely the shaft breaks up near the top here, and so what we started to do is we started bonding the shaft right into the coupler. Here's the coupler right here. So the coupler would fit right like that. We started bonding the shaft into the coupler with epoxy and then wrapping fiberglass around the shaft and the coupler. And this adds a lot of extra strength to the uh, shaft right where there is most stress. Um, right in this area here. So I'm hoping that's going to extend the average life of these shafts, but uh, for the most part the reason we went with this um, model, air crane, model aircraft prop is because they're very inexpensive, about five bucks a piece. And um, if we did, if I did snap a shaft, I could have another one waiting in the wings, probably even strapped down on deck that I could quickly uh, put onto the gearbox and keep going and wouldn't be a big deal because the whole assembly is fairly inexpensive. The, the shafts are, pro, are, are uh, almost free and like I said the props are about five bucks a piece so not a big deal. Now the unknown question is, is it as efficient as the prop that I used to use? Now here is the prop that we used to use. This was custom CNC machined. Uh, out of a big block of aluminum. They were very labor intensive to make and very expensive and I ended up making about three of them or four of them I guess and lost almost all of them. Well all of them except this one. It's the only one I have left. Uh, lost them all in the bottom of the lake because my shaft broke uh, and I lost these beautiful expensive props. So what I'm going to do is I'm setting up another shaft here with my old expensive CNC machine prop and I am going to run a test again, another watts test uh, and out and back uh, using a consistent watts output measuring my exact speed so I can quantify the difference between these two props here. Um, there may not be a big difference but there may be a difference, I don't really know. Difference could end up being just in the um, cadence because I think this has got a little more 
uh, pitch to it. So there may be, I think my cadence may be a little slower on this. This is a coarser pitched prop than that one, but that can easily be addressed by switching the gear on the gearbox. So this is something else I did today, was I welded a 15 tooth cog onto this uh, coupler and that can just be easily swapped out here for my 16 tooth. I've got a 15 tooth, I've got a 14 tooth, and a, and, a, and a 13 tooth as well. So I've got lots of variety that I can play with to figure out exactly um, my best, uh, most efficient gearing. I like to stay at about uh, 80 RPM, 80 uh, cycles per minute. Yeah, that's about it.